Section B, Attack on the Non-Reading Culture of Black People and BET. The show continuously takes jabs at the poor reading culture of African Americans. You know, we could all be reading a book right now. In a season 2 episode, Reverend Rackers believes there is nothing more that strikes fear into the heart of a nigger than literature and responsibility. So much so that at one point he uses no, not the Bible, but just a regular book and a job application form to terrify and exorcise those African demons. <laughs> removing an evil nigger spirit from a negro is as hard as removing a stank from a hunk of sh We must use these tools that the great God has given us to fight niggas. A whip, a noose. A nice stick, a brand and iron. These things strike fear into a nigger's heart. A job application. Read, nigger, read! Ah! Let me just say, that was incredibly racist, but I have to admit, whoa! That scene was hilarious. The Moonox claims that reading is so uncommon amongst black people. Hip hop artist Agnificen proudly congratulates Yui for just opening a book. Your brother told us how you be all into reading and shit. Hey, that's some real good shit, my nigga, for real. Congratulations, nigga. Did you just congratulate me for reading? Word. This is why it was often at nice with the TV channel Black Entertainment Television, aka BET, founded by Robert L. Johnson in 1980, because of this prevailing non reading culture. I don't be good at believe BET should be more responsible with the things they air. You know, I don't have, you know, BET is what it is. Everyone knows what it is. It's like, the question is, what are we going to do about it, you know? Because it's, you know, I, I can't talk too much more about BET. <laughs> I'll get into legal issues. Yeah, but to his dismay, not only do BET ignore this bad education and direction in the black community, the channel actually makes it worse. Black entertainment television airs semi-nude music videos Glorify violence, shallow TV shows, pointless and educational material that is mainly composed of materialism and get rich quick schemes. Something I'm really concerned about is always talking about material things, you know, always talking about how I can get something. Hip hop artists, unfortunately, who've been trained by corporate America to promote messages of mass materialism, along with very self destructive messages about drug use, violence, etc. And they've made our kids into zombies some of them they've, they've gotten them to, to the point where they're excessively materialistic and they don't have the money to buy the things that they want he blames the most influential black media channel in the usa for pampering the stereotypical nature of the coat nigger he claimed bet because of this material reinforces the already strong stereotypes of blacks being simple-minded and all that negative stuff the boondocks threw mouth jabs at BET throughout the series but none did not hit as hard as the season 2 episode the hunger strike and uncle ruckus reality show which were actually banned from air because of rumors that BET apparently threatened legal action Dang. the controversial episodes portrayed BET CEO Deborah Lee renamed as Deborah Levo, as an exaggerated, wicked, and sadistic CEO of the company, intentionally plotting ideas to call destroying black people. Welcome to BET headquarters. I'm Deborah Levo. It's 2 p.m., so it's time for a morning staff meeting. Our leader, Bob Johnson, had a dream. A dream of creating a network that would accomplish what hundreds of years of slavery, Jim Crow, and malt liquor couldn't. The destruction of black people! Yo, sister. Is that so hard? Mr. Levil, since BET came into existence, terrible things have happened to black people. Uh, dropout rates, uh, teen pregnancy, unemployment, and incarceration have skyrocketed since our debut 25 years ago. We really believe we're making a difference. Fire! The boondock, like any real satire, exaggerates this negative effect of BET's influence and the shortcomings of black <laughs> The destruction of black people is not happening fast enough! The other day I saw three niggas reading books. One of them was smiling. And again, it does bad the characters. Riley loves BET, but Yui almost physically dies from watching it without a break as a way to suggest that its content is brain poison. 
and he hates it so much in the episode he goes on a hunger strike until BET apologizes for its very creation and its executives commit Japanese ritual suicide. This hunger strike will continue until BET is taken off the air, the office is shut down, and all its top executives commit Japanese ritual suicide. <laughs> Chill out, Yui. Dang. And not to forget Dr. Martin Luther King himself with that epic season one speech. Black entertainment television is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Uncle Ruckus, the diehard white supremacist reasonably enough, loves BET. But not because he believes it has great content, but because it damages the mental progress of the race he so desperately despises. Every time a black baby is born, I'd give him a plasma TV and one channel, BET. Slap it right on the ceiling over the crib. By the time that nigga's 12, he'll be watching it in jail. Ha ha ha! BET forever! BET! You would think after such savage attacks on their brand, BET would maybe revise its ways? However, the black entertainment television I know still airs those nude cliche hip hop music videos about parties and stuff. You know, shows that display this. And I can't believe they removed network news at one point. It's not like those executives don't know, right? I mean, most of these executives like Reginald Wooden and Deborah Lee are Harvard Law graduates. They probably know the kind of effect this content has on its viewers. And it's not BET only. Some of these American shows that are portraying African Americans out there are just like, oh, that is supposed to be someone's mother right there. Maybe the Boondocks did have a point. What can we learn from basketball wives? That black women are vulgar and violent and that they do not know a trace of diplomacy? Shows like these are fun to watch, don't get me wrong. But at the end of the day, it's about what we learn from them and what they tell other races about us. And I cannot say the overall message of these shows is a positive one. Seems like watching niggas act stupid is becoming America's favorite pastime. A private nigga moment shames you. A public nigga moment shames the whole race. Conclusion. As for me, I can't help but side with Aaron on this one. And black people in general don't read unless it's a WhatsApp message or they are forced to. I'm not being racist here. It's a fact. Okay. The, the tragedy is that uh, as Africans, we are not reading. Yeah. We have lost the reading culture. But more importantly, as Africans, we're not writing. We don't document our experiences. It is a must as Africans. We must know our history, society, and struggle. So people who are as wrong and as biased as Uncle Ruckus won't define it for us. Now, if you think niggas is worthless and lazy today, oh, Lord, help me. You should have seen them back in slavery days. Good old master colonel and plantation owners like him. Provided dark is all over the South with good jobs, food, housing. I'm telling you, slavery was the best thing that ever could happen to Negro kind. Okay. Most of the African youth are blindsided by things that don't matter. While we lose our purpose and identity to other cultures, Kenyan professor Patrick Lumumba said it best when he said, But our young people in Africa today are imprisoned by Arsenal and Manchester United and Barcelona and Real Madrid and our young girls are imprisoned by cheap and South American soap operas and Beyonce Knowles. How can that be? How can a continent be so accursed that our young people have no sense of our history, no sense of our presence, no sense of our future? No wonder the Chinese are conquering us by the day. And we are wondering. Our young people must wake up. It is only the day that they wake up that they will be able to send a clear message to those in positions of leadership that you cannot continue to misgovern us. I look forward to those days. Besides, reading and seeing through Yui improves your intelligence, understanding and foresight of the world around you. You're able to make the best decisions not only for yourself but for the people around you. Everyone wants to change the world, but how can you change it if you don't even know how others changed it as well? What I liked about the Bulldogs is unlike many shows that represent people of African descent is its objectivity. On top of obviously addressing racism, it also dares to ask, 
can the black man really do no wrong? This is a shame. This is a disgrace. You know, um, uh, and I'm sure other African leaders are seeing this and they're doing the same thing. They have all this money in their, in their houses. It's a shame. This is a travesty. This is pathetic. This is what is happening in Africa. These guys are sitting on these monies. Our people are suffering. Our people are dying. Our people are perishing. Our kids don't have a bright future. Pregnant women are dying every day. You know, uh, people are sick. They don't have access to proper healthcare facilities. There's no hospitals to take care of our people. Our people are dying of diseases. But these guys have those monies and they're sitting on those monies. As you can see, the answer is a resounding hell no. We got work to do. Don't get me wrong. I love Africa and I love being African and I love Africans. And yes, indeed, I also know that it is an unfavorable world for the black man, no doubt. But in order to move forward, it is also important to look within ourselves before we start to criticize others around us. And it even makes it more important to strap up with not guns, but knowledge. Yes, knowledge is power. One video won't simply do just to show. I just sort of scratched the surface right here. I can totally write a whole encyclopedia on Riley Freeman alone. But I'm paying, which makes her a hoe. Why don't I just give her the money I was going to spend on dinner and that hoe can go grocery shopping? So watch out for future and more awesome videos on what I believe is one of the greatest shows of all time. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see Africa.